So um, to solve a problem again like this, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at this and again they're asking us to solve this equation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember this is already at a step that we're given. And just real quick, previously the problems we've been doing have just looked like this. Right? They just say f of x, and then we say find the zeros. So to find the zeros, the next step you do is you rewrite it equal to zero. All right? So this is all this practicing on all we're doing. And the only difference on the problems that I've been giving you is just been giving you an extra step and an extra, um, uh, an extra uh, description or thing what you're supposed to be doing. So we have 3x squared minus 3, 13x minus 10. So what I'd like to do is if I was going to kind of factor this by using a little guess and check method, right? You can do the AC method and do A times C and, and then factor by grouping. That's not a problem, but I'm going to try to do it a little bit quicker for you. So if I'm going to multiply this, and I know it's going to, I'm going to break this trinomial into two factors, I know to give me 3x squared as integers has to be 3x times x. Yes? Yes? There's no other two integers except for negative 3x and, and negative x, but I'm just going to leave them as the positive version. Then I need to determine what two numbers can multiply to give me negative 10. So I will break that down because it can be negative 5, positive 2, negative 10, positive 1. It can be 5 and negative 2, and it can be positive 10 and negative 1. Is there any other numbers that multiply to give me 10 or negative 10? Integers that I can factor it out, right? Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to determine, well, where should I place these without looking at my calculator and trying to figure it out? Where should I be able to place these inside these two um, binomials so that when I FOIL them, they're going to multiply to give me negative 10? Now, again, we know that 3x times x gives us 3x squared. And we know that whatever numbers we pick here is going to multiply to give us negative 10. However, what we need to figure out is what is the only factor that when we multiply one factor times x and we multiply the other factor times 3x, we're going to get a negative 13x. All right, so we can do a little bit of this in our head and just kind of do some guess and check. So what I would do is, you know, you can just kind of work down the list if you want to. All right. And just by saying, what about if I did negative 5, positive 2? Well, negative 5 times 2, or negative 5, um, negative 5 times x is a negative 5x. 3x times 2 is 6x. Positive 6x minus 5x is just 1x. We need to get to negative 13x, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not the correct way. But then we could also rewrite those. Hey, look at this. I already had my first try. I already got the right answer. Then I could rewrite that as what about negative 5, positive 2? Because 2 times x is 2x. 3x times negative 5 is a negative 15x. And what is 2x minus 15x? Negative 13x. Is that my middle term? Yes. So if I was to apply FOIL, if I was to apply FOIL to these two binomials, these would be these two factors would multiply to give me my uh, binomial. So now, once I've determined them, now all I need to do is I say I have a product of two factors equal to zero, so now I can apply the zero product property, saying that 3x plus 2 equals zero, and x minus 5 equals zero. Now, to solve the remainder, what I'll need to do is solve for x. I have a seat right up here. I'm starting to say your name. 